Anne here today. I'm going to show you how to make this really cute shirt for a dog. This is out of a onesie. Roxy here weighs a six wears, a six to nine month size. And there's just one seam you have to sew and it fits her perfectly. Hopefully you can see what it says. Okay, this t-shirt has some little angely wings here, which I'm going to leave as they are. I got this from the Goodwill. It's a six to nine month size. It's gonna fit Roxy, who's about nine pounds. So I'm just gonna cut straight across here. I could follow this if I wanted to, but I'm just gonna make it straight across for this one, like that. So now to make the shirt for Roxy, the front of it, which is here, needs to be a little bit narrower because her little feet come down from, you know, the underside of her chest. So I am going to be measuring this because I did try this on Roxy first. And now I'm just simply turning it wrong side out and I have the front facing up towards me because that's the part where I'm going to be cutting it apart right in the very center in order to make a new seam right down where her belly will be. So I'm just using this ruler here and I'm going to use a water soluble pen to mark the center of the onesie before I cut it right down the middle. Okay, after marking it, I'll simply get a pair of scissors out. I want to be careful that I'm only cutting one layer of the shirt, just the front or just the part that will be on Roxy's belly. Okay, so when you open it up, it looks like this. Where my hand is, is where the embroidery will go in just a few moments. So, you know, what I like to use when I'm embroidering is Tyrael Magic. It just makes a nice stiffness to the fabric, and I think it really helps with your embroidery to stabilize it. The other thing I'm doing is just kind of measuring and seeing how big of an image I want to have on Roxy's shirt. And I figured about four and a half by four and a half, something like that, but that's up to you. So I just flip this baby over and just get my little mini iron, and I'm just going to iron this, turn that baby on, and I'm going to iron this so that the Tyrael magic can do its magic. Okay, just to refresh your memory, what I did was this. First, I sprayed Tyrael Magic on here, heated it with my little iron. Then I put a piece of this on here, which is iron on, press on, no show mesh or fusible no show mesh. And when I was ready to hoop, first I put a piece of tearaway stabilizer down, and then I put the onesie that had the no-show mesh attached. So I'll just put it into the machine and get ready to start stitching. Okay, I forgot to thread the needle. And one thing I noticed that I did forget as well, let's bring the needle back up, is I forgot to put a bounding box around it, which I usually like to do. I guess I'll leave it this way for now and bring the press her foot up and I have to thread the needle. Okay, we're ready. I'm being awfully brave here because you notice there are lines in this and I'm afraid they're going to get skewed. But this is just a practice or a test to see how well this works. Okay, unfortunately, I took this out and showed it how beautifully it turned out. And I showed you how I took it out of the hoop, but I didn't have my camera pressed on. So I'm just showing you now. When I came over here on this side, I just tore away the tear away stabilizer carefully. I think I'll leave these long strands here. I don't think they'll bother Roxy at all with her hair that she has. 
So the only thing now that I have to do is to take this and put it right side up, bring the right sides together, okay? Because I'm gonna sew with these right sides together about an inch away from this edge, right? So I'm gonna make a big seam here. This is what's gonna go down her belly. The other part's gonna be on her back. So I'm gonna go over to my sewing machine. I'm gonna start up here. So this part's really nice and neat. If I have to adjust, I can adjust at the bottom. Okay, I've sewn this. I will trim it eventually after I make sure it fits her right and I don't have to rip anything out. Turn this right side back out and this would be on her back. And oh, by the way, I did put her name on as well. I thought that was a nice touch. And so this is Roxy's beautiful sweater. I will trim, no, I didn't make that very well. Remember I said I was gonna start at the top so I could make that nice and neat. It's not perfect, but I should tear it out and redo it, we'll see. But anyway, just so you can see how this is gonna work, I'm gonna take it upstairs try it on Miss Roxy, Miss Roxanne, and I'll take a picture and I'll be right back. Okay, doesn't she look adorable? Fits perfectly. It costs $1.99 to make. I can't believe it. You know, I went to Part Smart the other day and I bought her this for $14.99. And just think, I can get a t-shirt, an orange t-shirt if I can find one, or dye one, or use a black one and make my own things for $1.99. I mean, I think this would be a good seller as well. If you know people and they want to customize theirs with their dog's name on it, how easy is that? It's a breeze. I'm gonna show you how to do it in a brilliance in just a sec. Okay, here we are. And I'm gonna talk about embroidery today, but please know that you could do the exact same thing that I just did with Roxy's shirt and put vinyl on it. How easy would that be? Or sublimate on it, right? And you remember that shirt that I showed you that was $14.99? All it had was a pumpkin face on it. How easy would that be to do out of vinyl? But anyway, today I'm showing embroidery. So let's get started doing that. Okay, for today's lesson, if you want to call it that, I'm using a level of Stitch Artist, Stitch Artist Level 1. And the only reason was because I wanted to bring in one of my true type fonts and show you how easy it is to use all the fonts you have on your computer. You can do this easily just in, what would it be, essentials, uh, just putting on text that comes with in brilliance. But this is what I wanted to do today. So I'll show you how I went about and did it. As you can see, when I click on this, you can see that it's about, if you look right up here, four and a half inches wide by three inches, a little bit tall which is perfect and it worked out really well on Roxy's shirt. So let me move this over here for now and screen this over. Uh, so what I wanted to do was I went to Stitch Artist. So I came up here and I went to the Create mode and clicked on that and that opened up Stitch Artist. And I have actually all of the levels. So I may have more buttons here than you do, but don't worry about that because all we're going to do is come over here now where it says TT, which stands for True Type Art. And I'm gonna click on that. And I have to wait for a second because I have a lot of things going on on my computer. Um, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna type in free. Oh, I did it all in caps. Okay, so right now I have a uh, true type that has little icons or little glyphs, little, I can't think, dingbats, okay? And that's where I got these little puppy dog paws, and I'll show you that again in a moment. So that was the can dog thing. Um, matter of fact, I can show that right now first off the bat. So instead of putting that in as my text, since I'm in the true type, and the name of this font is can dog, I'll have a link for it for you down below in case you want to get it no affiliate just you know let me let me show you where things are so i'm going to put a capital m because i remember uh oh it wasn't a capital m uh oh i forget what letter it was now darn it hmm i mean it was a t yeah capital t i'll say okay and that's going to bring in the little puppy dog feet perfectly just like that and so what i did was i went ahead and drew a circle around one set 
and I came up here to edit group so I group those together so now I can move those as a group and I'm going to do the same thing for these guys grab these and edit and group and then to make them into stitches all I have to do is come up here and I, I just made them a fill stitch so I came up here and clicked fill and check that out perfect a fill stitch right and I used it over here and the same thing with this one click on it come up here and make it a fill I just left it at tatami the way it came in and I left everything else the way it is right here in this properties panel so you can take a screenshot of mine if you'd like to and copy it but that's how I made the puppy dog feet now let's go back to the true type and wait for it to open up and this time I am going to type in free all capital letters and I'm going to look for the font that I happen to use and I recall um, hmm, what was it called okay here's the font that I use it's called playful Jake so I'll say okay and it comes in like this there's the word free I can resize it I can bring the letters closer together if I'd like by simply moving them each one is its own individual letter so I'd have to click on it like that if I want to select them all again I need to circle around them all or I can come over here and select it but all I did next was I came up here and I made it a fill stitch and I didn't like it the black color or the so I changed it to pink so there was the word free and I can resize it however I'd like and then I'm going to come up here to this again and wait for it to open and I'm going to use playful Jake again because I think it's really cute so I'm going to name this or say this is kisses okay playful Jake kisses and again I can make it larger I can move it by this box come up here and just add a fill to it and then come back down here again where it says color and change the color when I click on the color that's here if I go to threads it'll show me all the different threads of the type of thread that I are the colors of the type of thread I usually use which is Floriani or I can go to palettes and that's going to show me what I have so far on this page so it's easy to pick the same one and say okay um, and then the other thing like I did before was I put the little footprints up here and this one over here whoopsie here let's move this thing out of the way oops there we go all right so I might want to change the sizes of some of these things and it looks pretty weird right now right so let's go ahead and hmm I think what I'll do I'll finish up first I put the name Roxy on here let's pretend like I'm going to make one for Daisy the big dog that doesn't really want any clothes but I'll just come up here not to do Daisy I didn't use a true type font I just use the regular fonts that are available and I may have a few more than you do because I have the Merrily fonts and I've purchased fonts also so if you look over here when I have the font selected the ones with the little needle beside them are ones that I've purchased outside of Embrilliance now here are some Merrily fonts that I have um, so I've gotten some from Stitchtopia I've gotten them from where else have I gotten them let's see the itch to stitch some of these are from the itch to stitch designs by Juju so anyway I just chose one and I looked for one that was cursive handwriting and of course I don't want it to be all capital letters like that so I changed it to D A I S Y and hit enter that's really way too big for what I want so I wonder how much smaller I can make this particular font so I need to go to Daisy to select it and try to drag it down let's see 
I can make it pretty small. Right now, those are kind of far apart. I can go ahead and grab these and move them closer together. Notice when I grab the bottom of the triangle, see how it moves everything at the same time? So if I come here to the I and I grab it, that's moving all of them and the Y. So I could just put her name like that if I like to. I don't really like that Y, but let's pretend I do. So this one's already ready to be stitches. And I just went ahead on Roxy's and just kind of tilted it a little bit. So it kind of looked like it was written there special. So let's get rid of this now. The one over here to the left, delete. Because what I want to do now is I want to show you how this is going to stitch out. So let's go to the stitch simulator and we'll start here. It's going to do this, the pause first and then the other one. And then it's just going to start stitching out the letters perfectly like this. And finally, when we get here, it's going to do her name. So that's all I have to do. However, this isn't going to fit, as you can see, in my 5x7 hoop. So I will need to go ahead and grab all of this stuff and twirl it around like this so it's going to fit. However, I didn't have to do that on the one I made for Roxy because I made the little paws a lot smaller. And I put one down here. And I may have made the name small or the words, the text smaller because I believe when I did it, let me think for a second. I think that it went straight up and down. So that would be like as if I click, click, select all of, whoops, select everything and I can twirl it again. And you see that's going to fit the right way, just like that. So that's all I had to do. I saved this, sent it over to my machine, and you saw what went, went on from there. But do remember, you don't have to do this in embroidery. You can make your design in Cricut Design Space. I just wanted to show you basically how easy it is to make the clothes for your pooch. So, I hope you enjoyed this. Please share it if you did. Hit the thumbs up and subscribe. I have links for you down below if you're interested in seeing some of the products I use today and you've forgotten what they are. And if you do use the links, I get a tiny commission and I appreciate it because it helps me to be able to keep Patty Ann's place going. So I shall see you again soon. Bye for now.